I V M. Hey there, friend. If you're anything like me, then you have no clue what a mutual fund is, and your life might be subject to market risks too. So that's why you should probably listen to Pesa Vesa by Anupam Gupta, who will answer all your questions about mutual funds, financial planning, banking, all that money stuff. You know. Check out new episodes every week on the IVM podcast app and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Hey everybody, welcome to the Geek Food Podcast. It's me Tejas mm-hmm. and I have Dinkar. Hey, what's up? Um it's uh late in the evening. Sure. And uh we are here recording a podcast. Okay. That you asked I, me what's I, up. I thought you were gonna, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I thought you were going to follow that up with the, it's late in the evening and then she does something. Yeah, I know. Brushes her long brown hair. Is yes, that correct? Yes, that's that's right. Uh, do you start at her brushing her long brown hair? Yeah, it's a long. Yeah. Do you like the song? I uh, hate it. I think it's not you know compared to the you know work that Eric Clapton has done. I know, right? Wonderful Tonight stands out as one of his popular ones for the reason that it is so simple. It's so I mean okay, like, I Like what's your favorite Eric Clapton song? Go. Uh the back half of Layla. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, no, so like the, the nice to meet not you. Derek I'm and the hipster. Dominoes, like that. I'm saying like just Eric. The back half the Lela from where the piano intro starts, the one that they use at the end of Goodfellas. Yeah, but that's not his. Um, that's him part of an ensemble. Oh, it's like a. Oh, uh, okay. Like Eric Clapton solo. You yeah, mean? yeah, yeah. Huh. Uh, I know, I know, I know. That's an Eric Clapton solo, but yeah. <laughs> well, actually, ah, uh, man, maybe this is maybe I'm just shitting on Eric Clapton again. But one of my wow. favorite things he's ever done slow is slow hand. My God, slow hand is awesome. But yeah, uh, yeah. no, one of my favorite things he's ever done is okay. this album where which is just wall to wall Robert Johnson covers. It's called Me and Mr. Johnson. Oh, so good. It's just him and uh, like doing pretty much very old school arrangements of nice. uh, Robert Johnson stuff. He's done a, I think he's done another album like that called um, On the Road with the King as just BBK. King covers as well, mm. and um, yeah, Doyle and Bramall and all these guys yes. are, who have written. Also really yeah. nice. So it's really really cool. What's your favorite Eric Clapton song? Uh, easy. Um, what shit? I don't even know the name. I like. If, oh, if I, I could change the world, thank you. Oh yeah, I love if that's I could change the world. Yeah. Uh, but also that feels very like. I mean, that's Eric Clapton doing contemporary pop. Really. That's that's, that's not, why I love it. It's okay. the be- you know, the, 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 I'll tell you why it's really good. Is mm. that I like it because it's complicated. Contemporary pop. It's complicated. It's like in- contemporary intellectually pop. written, musically complex yes. pop music, and I, that's my favorite. That's my. That's very on brand for 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 me to like that. Uh, have you seen uh, this band called Scary Pockets on YouTube? Yep. It's uh, Jack Conte and uh, and, uh, and just everyone else and everyone else. But the, the main band, and I didn't realize this. I thought it was like uh, it's rotating though. Uh, so two of them are constant. It's Jack Conti and uh, Ryan Lerman, who's the guitarist, and sometimes ah, yeah. he plays other stuff. Mm, I think the guitar player has also changed. If I'm not yes, so, so, so when that happens, Ryan yeah. plays something else. But essentially, the band is the two of them, and right. everyone else is a rotating. Yeah, thing. that's true. And the concept behind the band is yeah. that they do this only once a month because they yeah. live in two different cities. I didn't mm. know any of this. It's in the uh, the Sky Pockets HQ, uh, the studio. Basically, they have a dedicated studio. Yes, for essentially, it. Yeah, where yeah. they just go and do this uh, once a day with whoever, and they don't rehearse uh, yeah. beforehand. At all yeah. Sometimes they don't even know What songs they're going to be doing yeah, yeah. I suppose now they know Because you can vote on it I, oh, I say yeah anyway. right. What was the last one you saw? Uh, I bring this up Because uh, uh-huh. They have A pretty old one of theirs Is a John Mayer And Eric Clapton mashup Which is uh, Change the world And waiting on the w- uh, world to change oh. I think it's called Something like Waiting to change the world Oh nice nice so I must check this out Yeah it's good It's the I mean they switch back and forth But they start out singing If I could change the world And they And go away Yeah exactly And it's pretty good And it makes so much sense Because change the world Is very early period John Mayer yeah, I mean it's, a lot of people the template have for I mean, what he would old, have done old, in a lot old of John ways. Mayer has been compared a lot to Eric Clapton as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah, I'm into it. I dig Someone it. with a lot of guitar chops hiding them behind a sheen of pop production. Um, that's my favorite. That's thing. late Eric Clapton and early John Mayer. It's yeah. incredible. It's awesome. So is John a, Mayer the reverse Eric Clapton? My, well, he is making <laughs> wonderful tonight style like Oh, but that was towards he, the end of his career oh, as well. Oh yeah. I mean he's gone back into his wonderful tonight he's, kind of phase, but he did go from a uh, contemporary pop to some pretty country rocky guitar based uh, stuff he did a country thing in the middle that's true his latest single carry me away is uh is basically john mayer's like mess like his shadi.com pr- proposal like it's <laughs> like his profile it's like i think john mayer really wants to get married My and settle God. down yeah and this is the song that I should so. do it 
इज इट समथिंग आम सच समथिंग आम सच अ बम या समथिंग एनी सच आई आई जस्ट द कैन अ क्रेजी दैट आई बिन लुकिंग फॉर एन इज दिस रियली स्वीट लाइक हीज लाइक भाई Jo, come on, <laughs> come on! What you are you doing, John? I, I'm ready now. <laughs> Does it sound exactly the same as uh, uh, the one just before this? Love on the weekend. Yeah. No, uh, the love on the weekend. That was from Sir Shah. Carry me away, love on, on the weekend. weekend. I mean, the same. Come on, it's the same chords. I don't I hate yeah. doing this to music, <laughs> but, but no, it's not the same chords. It's almost the same melody. It is. Na 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 na. I mean, it's it's almost like a call and response thing. <laughs> Do you think it's like the Radiohead thing where you know the Radiohead O one one zero thing? Where Yeah. Where, uh, the track listing is actually if you take their first album and their tenth uh, album yeah. and intersperse them, they create a f- new yeah. album. Yeah, this is like in Boyhood when he says, "I took everyone's uh, uh, songs post the Beatles and, and put them put together, them into, uh, made the, the Black Album, yeah. 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 <laughs> the Black Album." Uh, that's, that's also, that's I mean, cool. uh, essentially the same thing with yeah. uh, what John Mayer is doing. If you took the first line of "Love on the Weekend" and the second line of "Carry <laughs> Me Away," zero one one zero, but in a single, <laughs> but in a single, <laughs> <laughs> man, uh, some. Someone is telling me about this recently. Hmm. I can't remember what is. Have you heard uh, what uh, the Dark Side of Oz? Have you heard of that? Oh, is that the one where you play Dark Side of the Moon and, uh, and watch, watch the Oz at the exact same time? Yeah. Yeah, 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 and apparently it fits like perfectly. I don't know, man. If you do enough drugs, yet. every time everything fits perfectly. This is true. I'm But pretty sure. I'm, I'm not. I'm not opposed to that idea conceptually. That uh, maybe for some things you should take drugs and how and would you to it. tell not, that they? It's uh, stupid because I don't. Can do anything. How can you tell that they're lining up correctly? Uh, apparently, uh, when you do drugs, everything. <laughs> do you know that Tool song which needs uh, where you take one song and the other song and you play them simultaneously and they become a third song? Is that a thing? That's a thing. I can I can actually understand that. From uh, tool, from tool, yeah, from because tool, they yeah. have a lot of like very uh, low to mid range you know, frequency <laughs> stuff, and yeah. then a lot of like different. no. So they had this thing where I mean, essentially, one was a long instrumentally kind of section. I think it's called uh, this might be Wings for Mary and another song. Wings for Mary is a song okay. he wrote for uh, his mom or something. Right. And the other one is something completely different, but also basically the lines match up. Right. And it's all probably according to like the golden ratio or whatever. Uh, yeah, that sounds like tool. Uh, tell me something. The, wait, what about this? I have another great one. <laughs> the Flaming Lips the Flaming have an Lips? album yeah. that you need to play on four different CD players at the same time. You put four CDs in okay. and hit play. Otherwise, none of it makes sense. How are you gonna? How are you gonna? So basically, they just gave you, you need the, three. Friends. They just gave you the stems. Yeah, <laughs> and essentially, you, you have to mix and master. <laughs> basically, that's what Scary Pockets does on their Patreon. Tell me a thing, though. Tell me a thing. Yeah. Uh, Have you heard about this uh, tool thing uh, becoming number one and upsetting all these Taylor Swift fans? Yeah, yeah, puts me in a weird place because I used to like both of them and now I don't like either. Well, you don't like <laughs> this new stuff? I've not heard the whole album, but I mean, okay. I'm not a big tool I fan, n- so I don't I know. I was never a big tool fan either. Yeah. I know a lot of it, but also it's very off its time. And now if you're in Oculus, it's not. Uh, it's not. It's like they've been. They spent 13 years making this record, but they could have put it 13 years ago. Uh, put it out 13, 13 years, years ago, ago as well, yeah. and it would still be roughly the same. I it's mean, like in a sense, maybe. That's saying it. it's timeless, but also it's not for tool fans. Have... Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I mean, they, they have a tabla on it. Yeah, they do. There's tabla. Is that, is that not the first time it's happening? I, I actually I feel like it might have happened. Yeah, hundred, I would put money on. It. I don't know tool. I've heard so it. much from tool fans about how this is the best album yet. And I I'm heard like, this. I heard some of it. It's cool. I guess. I don't know. It's man. fine. I it's, no, it's, it's no, more of the same. I have no context, I suppose. So I don't want to shit on it. Like maybe for people, it's not them. I think I'm just in a different place. Maybe where it's I'm like, not as much of a fan anymore. Imagine for us if it was like a band we absolutely worshipped, and they spent 13 years making albums. Like, yeah, of course, I'm going to be excited, man. Yeah, that's so true. So I, I love the excitement. I love that. It's awesome. But mm. uh, I don't. Uh, I also don't dare say anything about Tool. You know, it's like uh, <laughs> why? Sort of See, I don't like this. I appreciate Tool culture. I appreciate Taylor Swift. Okay. I, I, but I took why? Up because yeah, I took I, a few. <laughs> A fear in my film, so you're immune to it. Why is everyone so angry at each other? You can, I mean, I think it's, it's part cool of the culture, is number it? one. Why? Oh no, no you're saying oh, why people are upset about the Taylor Swift thing? Yeah, I think what's like, worse than your liking Taylor Swift does not exclude the fact that people like Tool, and that's pretty cool. No, but people, I, I don't think they know about Tool. And like that's why when they've like showed up suddenly displacing Taylor Swift's number one, her destiny of like owning the number one spot for how yeah. many years ever, whenever she does release an album, and it's been upset. Obviously, they're like, "Man, who the f- 
Yeah. yeah. He he deconstructed. I mean like uh, he's the Vsauce even, of he's music. The <laughs> he didn't even have to do it. Like it's so stupid. You can't and he says you can't own the minor key. It's yeah. like stupid. And they just like, you know, did this. This is ridiculous. Exactly. Really have you seen 12 Tone? Uh who's this guy uh who he has music notation uh sheets mm-hmm. and his entire thing is just voice over and him sketching out little things but it's the same thing he basically explains music theory and right. so he does a response video to Adam Neely which uh, Ad- and their friends obviously they're all yeah, famous yeah. music <laughs> music nerd youtubers yeah. uh where he said that you can actually so Adam Neely's main contention was you can't copyright timbre of an instrument because essentially what the Katy yeah, Perry I think that makes a large sense. part of the uh, Katy Perry lawsuit is is the pe- is the patch <laughs> yeah. right it's a synth patch yeah so he was like you can actually copyright timbre for some very specific reasons that he lays out which kind of makes sense but I'm not, I I get it the lawsuit can, still I, doesn't I make sense that you can but you can't it's like somebody going and like copywriting the like a piano a grand piano sound like that's ridiculous like so where does it, it really is pretty ridiculous yeah it's a, it's a weird space what i'm saying is that yeah. Lil Nas X wrote lithium <laughs> Got it. Maybe <laughs> he's Kurt Cobain reborn, dude. When did Kurt Cobain die? When was Lil Nas X born? You that's, tell me. Oh my God, that's true. Huh? Yeah. Kurt Cobain in 2019 would get popular through TikTok. Um, maybe he wouldn't be popular at all. Got my teen spirit in the back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Teen spirit is attached. I think it's time we spoke about what we didn't our even discuss. Our feelings on Taylor. Oh, Taylor Swift. Did yeah. you hear any of the new stuff? I have heard the new stuff. Uh, she's got Brandon Yuri on one song. which is like the most You know what's amazing un- about that song you have heard that song Yeah yeah of course you've heard the uh, the interlude where the, uh, the stomping starts and she goes like hey kids spelling is fun yeah, yeah, na, yeah, na, yeah. na 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 It's about Chelsea spelling M E me basically Essentially like yeah, yeah. Like, yeah Not on the album version What are you saying Yeah because I think even Daryl is was too stupid No I they couldn't think, have uh, yeah. I'm sure it was I well- haven't heard the album version but I'm pretty sure I read this somewhere Wow. And maybe she, I mean she's an artist she can make she a video an and an uh and and a song I didn't completed. like that song too much You know I think he was underused he's such a good he's like such a good vocalist, vocalist right this he's so under underused like she just got him because she knew that collaboration would make the internet happy and yeah. all that right isn't that pain, painfully obvious Doesn't that seem like a little Am I being like, a hater shit No I I, I mean, like Tate You know I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan I know you cover in your sets as well That's true some and stuff, even yeah. like bits of this I think could work musically yeah. but it seems somehow very calculated to me. Right. The same way as the previous album did. Yeah. They both seem I mean she's always obviously been a very image conscious pop star who's projecting a very clearly defined idea of herself. No, that's not true. Like so for me, I think she like if you watch any of the Netflix concert specials, uh Beyoncé has obviously like a a thought, like there's a concept there. Yeah. Uh Justin Timberlake blah blah blah. The reputation just felt like let's just do all of it let's just have the kitchen sink but she had such a clear persona she was the know, she was a snake yeah well i and mean and then at the start of the me video a snake is on the ground that bursts into butterflies oh, and now I, she's a butterfly i see it now Here's i don't thing. think she understands metamorphosis i don't think she saying. doesn't uh, she, <laughs> she thinks snakes eat a bunch of leaves and turn into butterflies now here's the thing i think she was trying to go with the whole bad girl tete vibe yeah. right like the whole that that's what her last album was all she about had a big like, reputation. she had a big reputation big reputation and uh Uh, and here's here's the thing i don't think uh she you can't be badass she is like uh 
white girl yeah. with no problems no. at all and no adversity she is like on top of the charts most of the time you can't you can't i don't know she she ever she couldn't pull it off and now i think she's done what katy perry katy perry did a different thing right mm-hmm. she went nuts yeah, on that on swish swish so weird yeah you know whatever that thing was and now they're friends and now they and now they're friends yeah. and they're back in their most Pure avatar ever Like the most recognizable format Of Taylor Swift and Katy Perry hmm. Are on the charts right now Here's yes. my theory Yeah I think they knew it didn't work Their life cycle is completing Yes The metamorphosis The metamorphoses <laughs> <laughs> well, What do you think of Ariana Grande? I think It's She's a really good vocalist Oh I don't know about I that think she can, I have my issues with know, her as as in like, very I, I don't, I, Let me put it she's this way She's got a great voice I'll give you that Thank you I, I don't know is She like It's like overkill yeah. A lot of it But and I'm a super anti Understood that. But but that's because You're like a band person I, I get it Like no, I love some like Very over singy stuff I just mm. think hers is more showy Than It is showy But I think she's trying, You know it's like Every artist today Is trying to Recapture the imagination Of a previous artist That used to exist And sit in those shoes mm. So like you know Right now it feels like Ariana Grande I mean I don't know Maybe Ariana Grande fans Will hate me for saying this But like I don't know It's like that Mariah spot Or you know Like where there's She that, is a little in that Mariah spot Yeah though. So that's kind of what She's kind of basing her her Like at least initially hmm. Now she's obviously Got her own voice And she's cool I actually really like Some of the songs Like Thank You I Next And all that is I, dope I feel like she's okay I, I'm not the biggest fan Of her music Like maybe the some one thing I like great. is uh, What is that song uh, Problem Something I one less one, problem one less problem. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That's a good song Great I like production. that And I like uh, the and one Thank You Next is cool man Thank You Next is good but And then she did that song with uh, Sorry with Mac Miller What was that song? But these are That I, was such a good song They're good songs <laughs> But I feel like they're exceptions More than the rule like, nah, Yeah yeah I'm not, I'm not uh, you Have know, you not heard Break Up With Your Boyfriend Because yeah, I'm bored um, yeah, 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 yeah 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 Or Seven Rings Again not fans of I'm any of these I've not heard Seven Rings But it's like for me she bought it Here's the thing hmm. It's like It's the same For for Drake I'm not a huge Drake fan anyway hmm. But I prefer Drake's singing stuff Over his hip hop stuff hmm. And like Sometimes when these artists Like You like, prefer Drake singing stuff Yeah hmm. You know all of this This is amazing <laughs> um, No no So so it's like When when I, I like Just go home Coming home Okay yeah. that's got a good Like thing going that's on That's also that. uh, Majid Jordan. I know that's true Yeah. But uh, I don't like the I don't like it Like what was that last album where, uh, Reputation Where she's like uh, Look what you made me do mm-hmm. Where's the melody in that There's no melody In these songs anymore oh, I would it. argue That song doesn't need a melody That like The breakdown is so good Man I don't like Songs that don't have melody I Like are we forgetting guys Hey d- Guys, don't forget. Songs need to have like something memorable about it. It's essentially <laughs> a recreation. I, well, let's talk old school. That is basically "I'm Too Sexy." No. Yeah, but that's not a song. Ooh, you look what you made me do. I'm too sexy. Let's not do it. Okay, listen. First of all, you know, the right said, right said is Fred, credited. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right said, Fred is credited. For the same reason as the Katy Perry lawsuit. That's nuts, man. The That's melody crazy. was too close. So the, Fred the, is like killing it right now. Right, said can is. We, uh, can he's we? raking in those bucks. So he was right. <laughs> and here's the thing. Okay, were there two? It's right, said Fred was and, a duo, correct? And then and and left. <laughs> <laughs> it was in stereo. <laughs> oh shit! No, okay, listen. Like man. Uh, Katy Perry sharks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we only know one. Yeah, left. Sure. <laughs> okay. So right. here's what I never got. Yeah. Was it our left or the her left? <laughs> I want to say it's stage, stage, stage left. left. Okay, yes. so Katie's so, left was the famous left shark. Katie's right was the oh yeah, is yeah okay. the left shark. Huh? Really? <laughs> yeah. Huh? No, no, okay. Yeah. Cool. That's how Interesting. I'm, that's how I'm going with. What are we talking about this episode, Tejas? Uh, okay, I'll tell you after the break. Hello and welcome to a brand new week on the IVM network. If you're not following us on social media, please do. We are at IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. If you're listening to a show of ours and you like it, please take a screenshot, tag us. We will reshare, repost and retweet your screenshots from our account. Here's what's in store for you this week. On a special episode of The Scene in the Unseen, Amit Verma is joined by some of his regular guests, Shruti Rajgopalan, Vivek Kaul and Rajeshwari Sen Gupta all at once to discuss some dream reforms. On the origin of things, Chuck tells you a story of a shopping cart, ruthlessness and a heck of a pivot. Tune in to find out which brand he's talking about. On Advertising is Dead, host Varun Dogirala is in conversation with Shamsuddin Jasani, Group MD at Isobar South Asia. On Pesa Vesa, host Anupam Gupta is joined by Rohit Srivastav, founder of IndiaCharts.com. 
they talk about technical analysis and the journey of his venture. On the empowering series, host Zarina Poonawala is joined by actor, singer, composer, and member of a band of boys, Sherin Vergis. He shares insights about his first music gig, his boy band days, and his current project called The Circuit. There's more music for you on the show 9XM Soundcast, where host Eva Bhatt is joined by Bollywood singer Neha Bhaseen. She talks about her Bollywood journey, rejections, and the need to break the myth of perfectionism. If that's not all, on Golgappa, host Trupti Khamkar is joined by Soham Pathak, a singer and composer who talks about his passion for music, football and much more. On paperback, Racheta and Satyajit are in conversation with the founder of Pink Elephant, Riya Mahajan, about venturing in the animation industry and the effects animation can create. On Football Should Ball, Gaurav, Karthik and Siva try to reel back from the drab international break to talk about the weekend league matches and the return of the Champions League. And with that, let's get you back to your show. Dinkar, we're back. So is Weezer, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now tell me about this Weezer thing. Yeah. Okay, Weezer, um, Fall Out Boy. Yeah. I don't know how they got into this one. And, and Green, Green Day. Day are going on tour again. Nice, huh? Yeah. Amazing! It's except for the years Fallout ago. Boy part. Yeah, I don't like Fallout Boy. Actually, I don't even like Green Day that much. I, I'm a Weezer guy. Oh, I'm a big Green Day boy. No, I, I, I mean I, I get it. It's like maybe I, I, I don't know. I just like Weezer's like non. Uh, they're not exclusive. In fact, I'd say there's a lot of crossover. That's why they're going on tour together. No, no, I get it, but it just feels like I don't know. I'm just never been into the whole act. Act. The Green Day thing, yeah. I so. think maybe it's more of an act now. I'm a like I am I more a of Green a fan, fan of pre-American Idiot more than post-American Idiot. I'm a big fan of the first few. I like American Idiot and I like twenty twenty first century and I like some of the stuff before that. I, I started hate tuning out. Uh, really? Yeah, I hate it. It's a dumb song mm-hmm. as well. But I'm not a fan of it either. I just find it curious that you hate it. Yeah, I, I, you know why? Because I used to like a band called Green Wheel, and then somebody gave me a Green Day album instead. Oh. Yeah, and anyway, that's you, probably you why. Were, you were you were lime wired. I was like, no, it was an audio cassette. Anyway. I know, but it is a lime wired. <laughs> you were Kazan. I was I was I was, <laughs> was Napster, bro. Anyway, <laughs> check it. Um, I like it. I like Weezer going on tour. Hmm, I like it, especially since. Are you they not need a fan a, of like old Green Day, like say Long View and things like that? Um, huh. Yeah. Interesting. I prefer Visa. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the vocalist. But I, why is you know it why? like I, I, out of all? Of, I'll tell you why. Because out of all these types of vocalists, I just don't like Billy Joe Armstrong's that voice that much. Maybe mm. oh, I, yeah. it's that yeah, yeah eh, eh. <laughs> you know that that you know that modern rock kind of voice. I mean, I'm but, just not into that some forty one kind of thing at all. But that's the thing, some forty one, good shot at that yeah, like yeah. the two thousands wave of punk bands. Yeah, not into it. They were the ones inspired by Green Day. That's my well, I get it. I completely understand. We're two generations removed from this now. Now here's the thing: if Weezer sung like that, maybe I wouldn't like them. But I just think they have the superior songs and the. Uh, but when Green Day came well, out, no, they, they changed true. the game with what they were doing so much that everyone else started doing it. And so in retrospect, it seems like he's one of that ilk, but he mm. started that ilk. Fair enough. He ilk- no, no, I'm not. Yeah, I know. I'm, j- I'm just saying that maybe it's the vocal stylings of these. He invented- Though I like some of the songs by all these bands, you know, like it's, it doesn't matter. But it's just like, I'm, I wouldn't get into it like Where hardcore. are you on Blink-182? I prefer. Prefer. Yeah, over other bands. Like, Again, I, I like mean, Blink-182 Blink is essentially Green Day turned up to 11. Got it. No, I'm, I'm, hmm. I actually dig that. But again, I wouldn't like go so hard into that. I think it's just the, maybe it's the voice. I don't know. I'm very, I'm very led by that. Maybe hmm. that's why Weezo is kind of inoffensive in that way. It's just like, you know, just him, it was just playing and singing his like funny way. And he's like, cool. He's like, no, he's like, no rock. The bassist yeah. of Green Day. Yeah. Mike Dunt. Mike Dunt. Have you realized he looks exactly like Vladimir Putin? Whoa, I was not going for that. But Who yeah, are you I going it. for? No, I mean, like, I know he looks exactly like some guy. I'm not sure whom. Yeah, Vladimir Putin. Nice. It's I'll... not one and the same, right? They weren't colluding. <laughs> oh, nice. Right? Wow. I yeah. am showing Tejas right now a picture of the two of them next to each other. The same. It's like Putin from his punk days. I mean, you mean Putin? <laughs> Putin. He goes around like shirtless. He's and, still a punk. Uh, annexing it makes so much sense. States outside. <laughs> You're telling me Russia hates America and Green Day just happens to have an album called American <laughs> Idiot? Huh? 
<laughs> okay, nice. I get it. Billy Joe has this thing where uh, some uh, well, it's a fake story he tells. Obviously, yeah, it's Billy Joe. Uh, but uh, they asked him uh, about what punk is, and he was like, "This kid asked me what punk is, so I kicked over a garbage can, and I was like, that's punk." Then the kid kicked over the garbage can, and he's like, "Am I punk?" And he's like, "No, you're trendy." <laughs> ah, nice. Got it. Hmm. That's cool. That's a good story. It's a good story. It it's I fake. Mean, that's fine. I'm okay with that. Yeah. But I think it's more of a It's illustrative It's a tale It tells a good tale <laughs> <laughs> Alright Are we Are we gonna do this episode Or what The last time I saw Blink 182 Yeah They were all Like They're all how, In how their 40s the last time? How many times have you seen them uh, The one time <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And that was the last time <laughs> But anyway, they they do this thing which is a throwback to a tour of theirs from like literally twenty years ago, I think, uh, where it starts out with just the drums and then this like curtain drop kind of moment yeah, happens, yeah. and then the word f- <laughs> is on stage <laughs> in giant like twelve foot letters on flames. Wow! Yeah, that's a this is a band of... in the forties. They look like they should be dropping their kids off to school. But, but Billy Joe Armstrong. Doesn't look I mean he's always had This kind of young face Yeah So even when somebody Told me hey This guy's like 40 something I'm just like Wait what I'll tell you why This is relevant Because you dressed up as him uh, No 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 But the past 24 minutes of our discussion Have been relevant Because Billy Joe Is in a movie Is in a movie And he's pretty good in it apparently When he plays like A middle aged dad or something Yeah he does Hmm. Uh, What's the name of that movie I'm gonna look it up (laughs) Entertain the audience In the meantime (laughs) Alright so uh, This week we're following up on last week's episode, which is, uh, we, you know, act like you can sing it. Is that the name of the last episode? Act like you can sing. Act like you can sing, right? Uh, and and this week is called Sing Like You Can Act. It is indeed. Yeah. So we're doing the, the inverse episode where uh, we're going to be talking about singers mm-hmm. and musicians who have dabbled in a cinematic fashion. Yeah. Now... Define the rules for me These have to be people Who started as musicians Started as musicians And continue to be musicians In some regard Maybe Okay we can exclude that rule But I have a more Pressing thing That we must discuss By the end of the episode Ordinary World Is Billy Joe's movie Yes that's right Okay So well, We have to decide <laughs> Yeah Whether By the end of this episode hmm. Whether musicians Are better actors <gasps> Ooh Okay I think I know already Than actors Are Good musicians Hmm Okay That's a I know, I know there's a Seems like there's a clear answer But maybe not Maybe not Maybe it's, not it's with the, some of the examples That I bring up We had some comments On our previous episode What are you saying? Yes. Really? Uh, so Vatsal Purohit on Twitter mm-hmm. Told us uh, Here's two more for this week's episode So I guess he preempted the fact That we were going to do a follow up Okay uh, Jeff Goldblum and Kishore Kumar Kishore Kumar of course without, Goes without saying The guy is uh, He does say it's, uh, So that's an iffier one Because he started his music And acting career At pretty much the same, same time Same time yeah I mean yeah. They were at the time Indistinguishable Because Funnily enough In an industry Where you must have songs In your films hmm. Weirdly enough Actors don't learn to sing Before they become actors That's bizarre Like in the west That's how it used to be With you know Whether it was Gene Kelly Or any of these guys And Sing in the Rain They could act Dance and sing So it was like Triple threats And now everything's like Become bipartisan Single threats <laughs> <laughs> Single threats uh, Yeah single threats and, Kishore uh, Kumar is awesome At I mean I Can do everything I, I mean yes But he was never Very popular as an actor I think he was in Some big movies yeah. But uh, I don't think He was that keen on acting either And once he started Phasing out of it He was more than happy like, To go like You know what I'm just be, I'm, I'm going to be singer Yeah yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that uh, The people we're going to Mention on this list all started as as singers hmm. and then went on to do movies. Some of them have just stayed in movies. Have you heard Jeff Goldblum's album? Uh, what is it called? Yeah, I don't know, but no. something jazzy. That's why and I he's asked. He's an amazing. That guy plays jazz Apparently music. He's really good. That's the most advanced form of music. And he's like, you know, A. Seems- John Benjamin, no. No. What okay, A. John Benjamin is an uh, actor. He's uh, you know him from a lot of his voice work. He's on Archer. He's on Bob's Burgers. Nice. And he's in a bunch of comedies and stuff. He has this album called. I should have Mm -hmm. Dot 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 And then the subtitle In smaller letters is Learned how to play the piano (laughs) So it's a jazz album He does not like jazz And he does not know How to play the piano So wait What is this album then? So it's a bunch of Killer sessions Jazz musicians Playing some standards And some new compositions Right And A. John Benjamin Playing piano but he doesn't know how to play the piano. So how is he doing it then? He doesn't. He just goes it's like, it's like it's like a da 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 break, and then he goes like trum trum ding ding ding. I love it. Literally, completely atonal, completely out of tune. He but has it, a slight sense I'm sure of timing. 
it actually there are moments it's it's like it's a thought experiment yeah, of an yeah, album yeah, really yeah, 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 and like yeah. he did it completely seriously he was just like i made a piano album i don't really know how to play jazz wow <laughs> or that's piano that's or anything it's really good it's like that tenacious d song uh, called jazz have you yeah. <laughs> the first it's just track, 11 minutes it's almost yeah it's it's very in that space but almost like taken very intellectually so the first track of this album is called deal with the devil where he calls the devil's office and goes like so i'm recording this album next week i'd love to have jazz skills i can sell you my Soul, and so they're like, right. we're not that interested in souls at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like a reverse credit card call. Yeah, amazing. Mm. In the eleven-minute track, "Jazz" by Tenacious D, it's just like them noodling it. Yeah. <laughs> and he just goes like, "Jazz." <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> not a bad track. No time, <laughs> space, and time. it's amazing. It's like one of my favorite things. But what do you done. consider Jack Black an actor, a, a musician who became an actor? Because Tenacious D Great was, segue. yeah, was a big deal. No. no he Here's a cool thing about it. They featured in their first visual stuff, like they on an HBO show, which was mm-hmm. just about Tenacious D, and it was just them playing themselves as musicians. Yeah. So I think they he made Jack Black, of course, made the transition almost seamlessly. They were both trying to be actors. Yeah, they were both improv artists, right? Yes. And, uh, in LA, from and, the uh, Actors Gang. Yeah, act, Tim uh, Robbins thing. Correct, Tim Robbins. That's why he features in a lot of their stuff. Yeah. And um and yeah and so and but obviously Jack Black just being as animated as he is and just like that's who he is it's not even putting uh, on a thing a retelling of what happens in the tenacious team movie. movie exactly <laughs> and he just becomes he became famous he did uh, kung fu panda the moment he did school of frog obviously that he exploded yeah. so he was already doing so they were actors <clears throat> who became successful as musicians and then parlayed that into acting yes games, maybe. absolutely okay. so i think jack black comes but i do want to take you back take me back to one of the first few where we were speaking about Kishore Kumar hmm. Elvis Presley I he's on my list Now have you seen any of his movies I, Okay I'm I don't know if anybody knows this I have a 9 foot uh well, <laughs> not a 9 foot tall poster of is Elvis Is it 9 feet tall No it's not 9 feet Yeah it's it's 6, six feet. feet Yeah it's life size And uh, and uh, I am a huge Elvis fan I always yeah. have been I was an Elvis impersonator in school hmm. and I had to learn everything you know his cadence and all that stuff so I a lot of my research because I was going method hmm. um was uh, was watching a lot of uh, terrible Elvis movies They're bad huh he, Is he a good actor No he's not but here's it's like the John Travolta thing it's like I know this guy. Hmm. I'm going to watch it anyway. And it's almost like bad in a funny good watchable way. Like there's a movie called King Creole and the story is I've heard of it. He's a he's a young guy from a small town wants to make it big. That's Elvis's story. In he fact, was a truck driver yeah. and then he became, you know, and he got I uh, did a uh, Uh, that's all right, Mama, and then boom, rest history. I was just going to say, it feels yeah. like a lot of his movies were written as vehicles for him. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Yeah, that's how he got into uh, Hollywood, and then there was a famous thing where he got drafted. He went for two years. Yeah. Came so yeah, so Elvis's life is is really funny. I think the acting thing was just like a subset of it, mm. but there are a lot of famous Elvis movies. It's crazy, man. Like there's uh, King Creole, obviously Jay Lasso. So a lot of this stuff is there. He is not good. He's not a good actor. Yeah. But uh, he's Elvis Presley, so you know your opinion does not matter. Someone yeah. very similar. Yeah. Let's take it back again. This is an obscure one in some ways, but mm-hmm. David Bowie. David Bowie. We were talking. We spoke about him last week as well, didn't we? Did we? we I mean, we mentioned. He's a clear him. musician who went act actor. So but how many films like, has he done the, though? How many he's films done quite are, we, a few. are we counting that says that these guys are actors, not cameos and so stuff? So this is the tough one, right? Like, I mean, I think we can keep it relatively wide open because David Bowie did a bunch of stuff, and they were uniformly uh, terrible. Except for the first film he did, which Labyrinth? Uh, no, which one? Oh, actually, Labyrinth is also a good yeah, yeah. one. Yeah, good. I was thinking of uh, the Man Who Fell to Earth. Have I'm you not, seen that? No, I'm not seen it. It's the weirdest fucking movie ever. He plays essentially an alien who falls to. Uh, well, he doesn't fall to Earth, but uh, he comes to Earth. to uh, make enough money to take back to rescue his home planet so what? he wants to make money yeah it's but currency thing. doesn't work like that i know it's <laughs> such a strange movie and uh, he basically while he's here becomes an alcoholic and addicted to watching tv wow like quite because it doesn't exist on his planet yes so okay. he's like basically the metaphor is that he's taken in by the materialism of the world and he loses sight of his wife and kids on his home planet ah. so like there are scenes where he's just like drinking and watching a giant wall of tvs and you're like what? What is happening? But he that is. Inc- sounds like a David Bowie music video or something. Exactly, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. it feels like it was written for him, but apparently it wasn't. It was based on a book. But I'm sure he picked up on it because it's so on brand. Again. Probably, it's yeah. very on brand yeah, for him. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. he's just. I mean, 
It's not that I'd say he's good, but he's got this thing. As an actor, him. you think he's not good? I think he's all right. Okay, I don't I know. Like, it, de- okay. it depends on how you define acting, that's right? That's true. Yeah, he's so got true. like he's got this magnetism where when he's on screen doing stuff, you're like, but that's well, the John Travolta I mean, thing. I want to watch John Travolta do things on screen. Yeah. It does not matter as much to me if he's good. I only recently discovered he's not a good actor. <laughs> Like literally Only True. after watching like uh, I'm t- The pe- taking of Pelham 1, 2, 3 Like uh, I said One of the worst films I've ever seen But David Bowie in Labyrinth Also Labyrinth, good yeah. actually yeah. And uh, he's in a Chris Nolan film He's in uh, The Prestige Playing Tesla himself yeah, yeah. The inventor of the car <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah it was funny How that made a f- Whole circle right Again when, even in that movie yeah. right? He's on st- on screen For all of what Like 5-10 minutes And it's not a lot of acting I'll give you that There's He's more acting pretty much Andy just Serkis, himself yeah. yeah Than you know Who's playing his Igor <laughs> yeah. Essentially But again Magnetic dude and when, the, when the guy talks You're like like I remember watching that movie I think the word like, you're yeah. looking for Is electric <laughs> Electric <laughs> Like the yeah, car yeah, That yeah. Tesla invented <laughs> <laughs> Alright so, so So we got David Bowie mm-hmm. Um Okay, I, I wanted to bring up a, a subtopic of this, right? Bring it. Uh, there are a lot of like R and B and hip hop actors, uh, musicians, yeah, who became actors, yeah, and like and were picked specifically for their dramatic roles, like in the beginning. There are so many. It's very interesting, no? Yeah. And Why do you think so? I, I'm I not can't put sure. my finger on it, but I, I think, think it's, it's because with hip hop in particular, yeah. there's already a persona and yeah. like a, like, it's like very you're performing already. In there's a, sense. a character inbuilt with kind the of. with yeah with with the brand and stuff like that. But still, that doesn't mean like Jay Z is clearly going to be a terrible actor. But yeah, I mean, yeah, but, uh, I agree. look at Common. <laughs> but look at Common. In fact, I have a list that I could look rattle at, uh, off. Moss like, Def, who goes by Yasin Bey. Exactly, Moss Def, Ice Cube, Ice Common, Cube, Ice T. Tea. Ice T, <laughs> terrible actor. Yeah, terrible. So bad. But dude, uh, like Ti is there in the Ant Man films. Ti Common is 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 you know in like so, so many, many different things. films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's in John Wick and stuff like he that. He was in Wanted back in the day. He was in <laughs> dude, check it out in the Fast and Furious. Series. Ludacris and Tyrese Chris are both Ludacris Bridges Yes And, and Ludacris, Tyrese Whose like, name I don't know Both of them <laughs> Tyrese Gibson, Gibson. Yeah. Tyrese Gibson uh, <laughs> Man Chris Ludacris Bridges yeah. Has been in an Oscar winning movie Isn't uh, he in Crash? He is in Crash He's in the first segment <laughs> oh God, Yes This is true And he's also currently saving the world in Fast and Furious 9 Right Yeah so I'm, yeah. I'm like, wow! How did the, you know? How did this happen? Was it like? Uh, is it like? Um, I, I don't LL believe cool it. LL Cool J. LL Cool J. I don't think it's a racial diversity card that you know Hollywood was initially trying to think mm. uh, as because they would never play the lead actor. Like they, they those would always go to dramatic roles. Like those dramatic roles would always go to like like main like core actors like a Denzel, etc. Yeah. Uh, who is in Training Day? This but I will counter day with uh, Lucas is in Training Day. Also. Oh yeah, correct. Jesus. Uh, but anyway. you counter <laughs> with the fact that Will Smith was a musician who became so let's an actor. Talk about Will Smith then yeah. We've already done An entire episode On Will Smith True So let's not like Dwell too much But he does typify The the best case version Of this right He started off As a musician He was the Fresh Prince He was a rapper The yeah. other guy was the DJ Jazzy Jeff Yeah yeah. And I'm the rapper He's the DJ Yeah <laughs> Okay <laughs> And But similar to Tenacious D Yeah Got a show Based around his Actual persona Produced by a musician Correct by Quincy, Quincy Jones yeah. produced it Yeah 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 That's so weird So like apparently the thing was Quincy Jones was just like Let's make some show With this guy what? I think Quincy <laughs> Quincy's nuts right He's You've seen so that? nuts He's so nuts right He's nuts uh, I think Quincy Man Quincy just does Whatever Quincy wants Yeah And apparently he was like I like this Will Smith kid And who He, he was, was right. clearly right <laughs> <laughs> he, he bet on Michael Jackson as well He bet on Michael Jackson as well Wow Anyway so So Will Smith is obviously there um, Do you think Eminem counts? Rapper He's done one did an film. acting, yeah. Did an acting. He essentially played a version of himself. Essentially, yeah. So I don't. I wouldn't count him. Hmm. Uh, but someone I would count, Beyonce. Now here's a question I have for you. Yes. Is Beyonce a good actress? I don't know, man. Uh, Is it okay. one of those things? I don't like her in The Lion King. I think she yeah. does a serviceable job at best. I mean, also, I wouldn't count it as a film where we can really see how well she's doing. But I've seen a lot of the films she's been in, like Dream Girls or the, I was gonna say, the yeah, Fighting Dream Temptations. Girls, I haven't seen Fighting Temptations. Yeah. Dream Girls, I think she's good. But Jennifer Hudson, another singer. Another singer, yeah. Uh, but again, that's a musical film. So yeah. so obviously, these these things count. Jennifer Hudson, one of the few singers who left singing pretty much. And now I guess, right? Became an Oscar winning actress. But then she was, did she ever? Put out her own music 
other I than like what know. she did on American I'm sure, Idol. I'm sure she has in some form. And of she didn't win. Like she, she was. Won. She won the Oscar. No, I mean she didn't win American Idol. Yeah, she she was like fourth place or something. Right, she which is insane, right? Like <laughs> and she went from that. Oh my god! Can cast? you imagine American Idol going like not for us, and the Oscars going like <laughs> please, <fine. laughs> we'll, we'll, take, we'll, we'll take we'll, care. We'll have that. Man, that's crazy though, man. And you know, she, she obviously steals the show. She's excellent. I think yeah. she's a really good actress. Uh, that's why I think Beyonce in that right pales a little bit. What else has she done? I know she's in the Austin Powers, one of them. Yeah, but she's basically just. I mean, she's oh doing God. the. Is there something that Beyonce can't do well? Is it acting? I I guess this is a this is a tricky situation. Uh, can yeah. Jay Z and Beyonce okay. both not act? Jay Z definitely can't act. <laughs> I can picture it right now. Jay Z in a movie, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like yeah. someone goes like, "Jay, we have to rescue the world in ten minutes." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a little bit of a skit. Yeah. Before O uh, three Bonnie and Clyde, <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, all they need actually in this life of sin is him and his girlfriend. Anyway. Him and his girlfriend. <laughs> okay. Here's, right. a, here's a good one. Here's a good one. You're going to like this one. Okay. Justin Timberlake. All right. Wait. I want to discuss that. Let's take a break and come back and <laughs> talk about it. Justin. What do we have to do? <laughs> Welcome to Waterplay, you guys. This is the favorite sport podcast of several sports persons, such as myself, Rudeja, and Mikhail, who also happen to be the hosts. Yes, uh, yeah. you, you should definitely listen to our podcast for our take and quite a uninformed but hilarious take on, on sports every sports. week. Uh, we give out awards, we discuss uh, what happened in the world of sports, and uh, we, we take we, breaks as well. We come up with jingles and sound effects on the go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you should definitely give give us an example of a sound effect, Rudeja. Bolo <laughs> Yeah, tune in for some of that, bro. <laughs> you can catch us on the IBM network every Wednesday on the go, on the Wednesday in the Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday, what a player, what a player, W, Wednesday, W, wow. oh, Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Wednesday to Wednesday, what a player, Matthew Wade. All right, we're back. We're talking about <laughs> Jay Z was just in the studio. Yeah, he was just here doing an off-brand imitation of himself. I yeah, it was like uh, the. <laughs> I was like Jay. sixth blueprint. Okay, yeah. one second. Yeah, let's uh, let's talk about these musicians who want to act and have successfully done so, and okay. some not so much. First in question, Justin Timberlake. I think he's a good actor. I think he's a really good actor. And he's here's surprisingly how I good. No, here's how I know. Hmm. Which film did you watch and say like, "Oh, Justin Timberlake is a good actor"? Uh, the one that flipped it for me was Social Network. Social Network, of course. Yeah, yeah. he plays. But he's also like been great in uh, Lewin Davis. <clears throat> yeah, he's great in Lewin Davis. Man, I saw this really weird film starring Samuel L. Jackson, Christina Ritchie, and Justin uh, Timberlake called yeah, Black, Black Snake, Snake Moan. <laughs> right? And in that, the well, story we said it together. Now the Black Snake Moan is going to appear before us. <laughs> <laughs> to see it at midnight. That's yeah, it. Or 3 right. a.m. or whatever. We're safe for now. The witching hour. <laughs> um, the cool thing about... So the movie is a really weird movie. It's so weird. It's about... What do you call a, like, a sex addict? What, what, is, what is the word? That's the term. A nymphomaniac? A nymphomaniac. Right. So she is, um, she, she is suffering from this thing mm. and uh, she tries uh, she's I don't know how she gets you know drunk blah 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 and ends up on Samuel Jackson's doorstep and uh, sh- he kind of takes her in and tries to save her and cure her yeah. with the power of blues the power of blues music and it's insane and that's uh, and he plays a song called The Black Snake but the cool thing about that film is that her, she has a boyfriend and uh, it's played by Justin Timberlake but the cool thing is that um, he does a really good job because he's like a uh, an army uh, guy, or like an army, like an ex army guy, but who's suffering from PTSD. So he's like also burdened with his own problems, and he was really good in that. He's there in a few scenes, but I was like watching. I was like, "Yo, the boy can act." I haven't actually ever seen the movie properly. I've seen like uh-huh. bits of it yeah, on, yeah. Uh, like it used to play on TV all the time. You remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a classic TV it's kind a of very style TV movie. movie yeah, thing, and I was yeah. just like, "What is this? Is such a weird movie?" And yeah. then like move on. Yeah, but, considering yeah. there's a lot, it's like an R-rated film though. Yeah, yeah, but and, but but yeah, man, he's he's really good in it. Obviously, Social Network, he's he's mm-hmm. he's good in. Um, Here's my contention. Go. Is he a musician who became an actor because he started on the Mickey Mouse Club? Oh, good mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Let's 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 dive into That's this. That's a tough one. one. That's good. He I started as essentially I mean the Mickey Mouse Club was music as well, but he was a performer, a VJ essentially. He was a VJ and uh, uh the I want to say that because it was so intrinsically tied to music hmm. that that was his eventual plan anyway because he obviously yeah, well joined Yeah. I NSYNC. mean they were essentially picked as future pop stars. Yeah. And the, the, Him, all of them, Britney, right? Like, Christina, Britney, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, did uh, Britney Spears ever act? 
uh, one film. What film? Crossroads. crossroads. <laughs> well, now the crossroads are going to appear before us. <laughs> oh man, that's a that's a famously terrible movie, no? Apparently, I've never seen it. Neither have I, but yeah. I've heard it's terrible. I only remember it is because it's the name of a Bon Jovi, <laughs> uh, the greatest hits uh, Bon Jovi. Yeah, album. Anyway, of course. Uh, but 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 yeah. Uh, so she's in that. Christina Aguilera has obviously acted. But in what? She's been in a bunch of things. Uh, uh, she was I feel in, like uh, you're right, but was I can't remember in, anything. Was um, she in in uh, Burlesque? Oh yeah, I, I think movie? it might be right. Something With like Cher? that. Yeah, yeah, I think Cher so. Cher is a like Oscar-winning she, musician Oscar, turned he, actor, no? Yeah, I've never seen anything she's been in though, so I don't know if I can say what I think. She, uh, I, mean, I mean, I think it's great, good for her, but uh, I, I mean, I don't, I don't have a lot to add there. Yeah, yeah. Moonstruck is her Moonstruck. The movie she's with, famous with for. With Nick Cage, yeah. With Nick Cage, yeah. Yeah. That's the one she won the Oscar for. Is that the Question one he won? He won the Oscar for as well. I've messed this up before, so yeah, I'm not going to mention it. Academy Award winning actors Nicolas Cage and Cher. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Anything is possible if you dream bring, big enough, guys. Okay. Do you believe in life after the Oscars? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Thank nice, you. Nice. <laughs> uh, well, uh, so, so here's the thing. So, Cher, Justin Imlake, what are the other movies? He's done Trolls, I guess. Oh. And he tried to convert. Well, technically not convert, but Anna Kendrick is on that album. On the on the trolls album, she's 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 both of them are the leads of the film. Yeah, but she's had her thing with Pitch Perfect, so she's with an cups. actress. Yeah, who's who's become a singer. Kind I of. guess, yeah, 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 yeah. She counts in that space. Though yeah, she's yeah. only ever done Cups and the Troll song. When the Trolls thing is like anyone jump in. <laughs> no. The cool thing about that soundtrack is that he actually got the original Earth, Wind, and Fire to re-record, retrack uh, September. September. Yeah, which is really cool. Wow, he remembered. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's good of him. That's very good. Okay, very another good. one that we All discussed right. last week, and I'm not sure if it uh, counts even now. But uh, Marky Mark, Mark Wahlberg. So we we said we would speak about Marky Mark. Does he count? I mean, the vibrations, <laughs> they're good. Yeah, those good vibrations. Tell me this. That song <laughs> yeah. is. I love that song. It's, it's a awesome. Classic. But who remembers anything other than the sample? <laughs> Marky Mark has some. No, no, no. He does. His- he, no, no. I remember it because it, Marky Mark's a style of rap, and I'll put it this in like <laughs> yeah. very generous in, in, quotes, yeah. <laughs> very tenacious quote. Uh, <laughs> so in that, he's doing like he rhymes words like something. Man, the man. man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like what the heck. <laughs> Basically, it's yeah. like the whitest thing, he, oh, but I love it. He's basically playing like a snotty-nosed uh, white kid. White kid like, who's yeah. like, I could do this, man. He's, but I love it, and he's right. He could do it. Yeah. He's Marky Mark. Uh, let me give you one more, All right. a relatively recent one. Harry Styles, again in a Christopher Nolan movie. Yes, in the new Tenet film, is he? Or is he in Dunkirk? Uh, he right? was in Dunkirk. Yeah, but after he that, might he's... be in Tenet as well. I don't know. But he has okay. performed a bit. He has Nick Jonas <clears throat> was in Jumanji. Two, yes. Both of them were pretty okay in both they these actually, roles. Nick Jonas surprised me. Harry Styles actually also surprised me. You're right. Harry Styles didn't have a lot to do, honestly, That's if also, you ask me. Also, a Dunkirk lot of it was a little less to do. <laughs> correct. A lot of it was about atmosphere. And Harry Styles, in the context of what was happening in Dunkirk, he really yeah. works. But I don't know how much of that is down to his skills and how much of that is uh, just good casting and good direction. Do you think that musicians are... Automatically have a disposition to be because their performers are good actors. Is that a is that a rule that we can I find exceptions wonder. of? I'm sure, but it could be true yeah. because there there seem to be a lot better to answer the the question that we posed. Better I, mu- like at this thing, which is that musicians becoming actors and doing a decent job of it rather yeah. than the reverse. I definitely think so. Yeah, I and. Maybe it's not every kind of musician. For example, I don't know if Adele will ever be like a show-stopping actor. But she wouldn't do it because she... Like, you know, the ones who have tried obviously have some kind of belief yeah, that they can exactly. execute it. Um, I mean, Jared Leto is like an interesting example. Correct. Because he obviously is he's a musician. He's a vocalist uh, of 30 Seconds to Mars. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he's a fantastic actor, man. I mean, yeah. despite uh, his... Uh, Another Oscar Joker, winner. Oscar winner But he's exceptional In that movie In Dallas Buyers Club yeah. He's so good He's a great actor overall I actually really really like him You know Even I, I always thought That he would make a good joker I mean He had a shitty script But and also that's a very theatrical happened. performer Right Also yeah. in that space Lady Gaga Lady Gaga I've not seen this now movie Now a celebrated now. actor uh, Have you seen this, this movie? No The Star Being Born? Yes I have not Okay, so we don't know. Basically. We can't Apparently say. Apparently, she's but, really good. I mean, though. she's clearly. And I'm not. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised at all. She is fantastic. Lady Gaga is awesome because she's so 
But a very theatrical performer, so I can see. Like I could have mm-hmm. told you ten years ago that if Lady Gaga was going to be in a movie, she'd do well. But we don't know if theatrics make for good subtle performance art, also. Because Which apparently, yeah, maybe we should watch this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm not saying her, but I'm just saying I don't know if they're both uh, mutually exclusive. Okay. You know what I mean? Let me give you one in the middle ground where it's not a clear like performer defined thing. Okay. Mandy Moore I was on my list a perform like she good was good actress good actor yeah and uh, she, like I thought her music was pretty okay at the time and she's clearly not uh, what about only hope from a walk to remember well, I don't know only hope from a walk to remember <gasps> you've not seen the a walk to remember no okay i'll just I'll just keep some tissues man <laughs> it's it's a great film All i right. really liked it and only it hope is her song from it yeah, yeah. It also has top loaders dancing in the moonlight in it. It does. I think so. Yeah, well, I'm into it now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another actor, uh, Jennifer Lopez. Okay, this is very interesting. Two opposite ends of the spectrum, right? Like Mandy Moore. Uh, I was listening to her on Mark Maron's podcast, where she right. talks a lot about how she really wanted to do music. Okay. And uh, so she got thrust into this pop star kind of space because her record label made her. Mm-hmm. But she's always been writing her own music, and she's wanted to do her own music for the longest time. Uh, and for a bunch of reasons, including the fact that she was married to uh, Ryan. Adams right who apparently was kind of a dick to her about following her own music dreams and that's not surprising to me I at all I know and like weirdly I heard this after like the story about him came out after but the cancelled. interview is from well before that after yeah. he got cancelled yeah. and she's not very like upfront about it but clearly like she indicates that mm. he wasn't the nicest about her but following her I own mean, musical like, dreams anyone who knows even the slightest about Ryan Adams can see that being a problem that he's a douche that way I mean he's I, you know I almost feel for the guy because like I know he's got his own issues he's got uh, yeah he's just got a ton of issues but uh, but yeah man uh, the, his ego is like is huge and but I'm sure yeah, he, he was just very was controlling in the I'm sense that he wouldn't let her like basically she felt like she yeah. wouldn't want to make music while yeah. she was around him so she was like that entire stretch where I was married to him I did nothing oh, what a guy that That's... is so f***ing weird and yeah. like yeah she was talking about this before any of this came out so she's not even saying directly this is what happened but clearly like especially in retrospect you're like oh my god how dare he yeah. to our Mandy anyway I know. So, it used to be our Ryan And now it's our Mandy yeah. I mean actually I always like Man you have to watch Walk to Remember I should me. watch a Walk to Remember But I do think she's a good actor She's great in uh, Saved And right now she's great in uh, This Is Us Oh I need to watch This Is Us uh, She's an entourage She is uh, She's an entourage The obsession of uh, Vincent Chase's you yes. know, Life basically It's quite funny but actually But clearly she's a good actor Who's always wanted to be a musician So mm. she's like right in that space Where she's kind of in both worlds Jennifer Lopez on the other hand what do you think of her? I, I think mean, she's, she's a terrible she's musician. She's always uh, going to be Jenny from the Block. For she's me, Jenny man. from the Block. But I find it astonishing sometimes that she had a music career. What? No. Listen to her voice. Oh, okay. Uh, if you're saying what does talent have to do with music? I'm not saying she's not talented. She's very talented. But she can't sing. <laughs> I think she can sing. Have you seen her on uh, Jimmy Fallon when she does uh, when she does tight pants? Oh, yeah, I love that. I love it. Uh, so but funny. Jimmy Fallon is so much better <laughs> at singing than her. Uh, maybe the key was wrong for her. No, uh, well, okay. Listen, okay, man. Think back to <laughs> Stop Think back to any Jennifer Lopez song where it's not the hook and think of how she sings on the verses. It's usually like this very thin, nasally, reedy, high-pitched voice. Okay. Right? It's yeah. it's so strange. It's the most it's not at all a pleasant singing voice. <laughs> oh God! All right, I just think like, J Lo's great. I love J Lo. Her best song is "If You Had My Love," if you where had her my voice love is like I gave you exactly yeah. much lower register, and her voice is covered in production. Like there's just production all over That's the thing. Pop you music, barely hear. The, the car? <laughs> well, what I mean is, on songs like Jenny from the Block, when she sings the verse, I'm still I'm sorry. Other than the hook. Her voice like pierces through the production and comes out as terrible. <laughs> Listen, man, you. I, I, to me, it's like dreaming. Yeah, that's how she sings. <laughs> Listen, you can't be fooled by the rock. Just that she's before got. it goes into the chorus, yeah. But before that, <laughs> it's like she literally goes like, "To me, it's like dreaming." Yeah, and then the chorus comes in, and I'm not like I'm purposely singing badly, but she tried to do that Aww, in earnest. I think you're being very harsh on that. I am being kind of harsh. I don't know. Why. No, no, it's w- okay. What do we think of her as an actor? I really think she's good actually What's she been in? I can't she's like She's been in Made in Manhattan With Ray Fine. I love that movie She's good in that Yeah yeah She's fine in that As both of us As a rom-com aficionados It's a good late period it's rom-com It's a late period actually. Yeah I would say It's, it's decent And it's Ray decent. Fine. Yo, I think it's a decent Yeah Ray Fine is great Huh What else has she been in? She's in Anaconda Anac- What? Yeah Isn't she? Okay I can't remember I yeah. think so With uh, Ice Cube 
Oh, yeah, <laughs> I think so. Wow, he chops uh, the Anaconda's head yeah, off, yeah, yeah. if I remember correctly. Huh. My God, it's coming back to me now. All right. She's uh, been in that Out movie. of sight. Ah, with uh, George Clooney. Yes. I haven't seen it. <laughs> Which was then made into a TV show starring George Carla, G- Carla Gugino. Okay. I haven't seen either of these, but uh, is that a good movie? It's, mm, it's escaping Quentin me now. Quentin Tarantino wrote this or something <clears throat> like that, I want to say. Oh, then I might I, be guessing then it's, at this. That is probably bad. Anyway, <laughs> um... I'm going to give you one which I love and okay. I, who I think is a better actor than a musician. Oh. Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. okay. Now here's the thing. He's in um, The Hunger Games. A series you mean I, how he's been acting like Jimi Hendrix his entire career? Boom. Yes. I mean, this that's has been the, the Geek Film Podcast. There's only one take on Lenny Kravitz. Come on. <laughs> yeah, all right. I know. Alright, but, uh, but, but he's actually good as the character of Sinna who is basically uh, J-Law's J-Law's fashion, um, fashion stylist. Yeah. And he's great in it. He's good in that Yeah I mean he's essentially Playing Lenny Kravitz But that's fine with me Maybe Lenny Kravitz is uh, When he's not revealing Himself to the public <laughs> This is something That has happened Multiple times And he was fine with it He's like, good with it Oh man He's terrible. like Let me give my gift yeah, To the world This is I know, terrible But um, <laughs> But uh, Good uh, Good uh, Actor What else is he acted in That's all I know man That's all I <laughs> You're got. basing all of this On his one cameo As Sinner he's, ca- hung- he's in He's in multiple Hunger Games films His daughter is in more movies than him then that's true is she, is she, a, is she a singer oh uh, I mean she might be but she's an actor first I'd count her as an actor first I have only one more name okay uh, before I get into act 2 of Avengers Infinity Song okay give us your last name <laughs> uh, Harry Connick Jr yes amazing uh, jazz musician mm-hmm. uh, pop jazz but pop uh, jazz, sure. but but uh, he's featured in um, a number of things hmm. including the movie P.S. I Love You. Yes. And then some other stuff. TV Is he? Stuff. A, okay. He's good. He's, he's a great musician. He's a great musician. And he's a good he's a actor. Yeah, he's a good actor. Mm. I just love the guy. Nothing to write home about, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Then go I, I, I don't know why I went so brutal on that. I, I just meant like... On Harry Connick Jr. Jesus. I mean, if he was only an actor, I would not notice him. <clears throat> Act two. Okay. Uh, if you listen to our previous episode, I decided to write an... Uh, uh, an Avengers musical ti- It's the titles of, the, of an Avengers musical A proposed one Yeah It was Now I've given it a title Avengers Infinity Song I love it Okay Act 2 Begins with the overture mm-hmm. um, I also made some Addendum <laughs> to, to the previous <laughs> To the one. previous volume okay. I was thinking It would be really awesome To start the musical With uh, you know Peggy Carter mm-hmm. Singing You know About how she still Has a date left <gasps> That would be cool Ooh, right Touching Yeah yeah Act 2 starts with the overture Okay Alan Silvestri on crack Sure Second song Gotta move on Cap and Nat sing it together Nice uh, It's just that you know The whole Can you thing. Okay w- uh, Give me an indication Of the kind of style These the style. would be This one is like a slow A slow, it's a slow guy. You know All Indie right. kind of number yeah. But you know Duet Really really So we're starting things slow and active Of course yeah, Okay It's five years later Yeah You see If you've, if you've noticed I've made the division After they cut off Thanos' Exactly head, yeah, Right Perfect Just so in the interval You feel like time has passed Anyway <laughs> Second song Oh well yeah Third song Time Heist Sung by Ant-Man Just explaining nice. that he wants to And it's like a, Like the Ant-Man score itself hmm. um, One of my favorites And I, I also recommend That they could use The original song Best of Both Worlds Sung by the Hulk I love it Explaining his new situation his new situation <laughs> Alright Oh And that's a solo song That he does as like A show stopping number Which yeah, is yeah. a showcase for Best him, of both worlds it Jumps onto a table It would be amazing this, the, nice. this, At the diner Yeah um, I'm skipping a bit Thor Well when we introduce Thor hmm. um, It's uh, uh, It's called King of Asgard This hmm. is sung by Thor and Hulk And he's basically, it's basically a satire It's like the emperor's new clothes Like nobody yeah. wants to address the fact That he is not a good king And he's like let himself go Nice Right Then we cut to uh, Tony and Pepper It's a reprise from the first act I was Iron Man Basically nice. You know yeah. I might I might abridge some of this up hmm. <clears throat> Next Time heist reprise Ensemble cast Okay, this is when they're making hmm. the plan to go and retrieve the stones. Is this sung through? I yeah, yeah. Say this it's kind be, of a Lavi okay. Bohem kind uh, of thing. Okay. Yeah. It's like an answer. There are a few numbers like this. Hmm. Um, then, whatever it takes, solo by nice. Captain America. Solo. A solo, Captain America solo. Let me guess, this is coming back in Act 3. There's only two acts. This is the end Ooh. of it. You know. What? We, we conclude here. Okay. Okay. Um, next song, I Wasn't Always Like This. Nebula... Mm-hmm. And War Machine 
Nice. Yeah. Nice. Who would have thought? We needed a song. But we got one. <laughs> yeah. Great. I like it. All right. Uh, next. America's Ass. Cap- Captain America, Stark, and, uh, and Ant-Man. This is the scene where they're in New York. Neat. Right? Uh-huh. I've, I've missed a song between Strange, uh, well, uh, this, the Ancient One and, and Hulk. So I don't know what to do there. But anyway, we'll move on. Okay. I'm still worthy. That, Thor, that's one we'll drop after the off-road video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thor and Frigga. Okay. Mother and son sing this song together. Nice. Now, another good one. A Soul for a Soul reprise in the, in What's the first act. What's the Thor and song called? I'm Still Worthy. Oh, okay. Nice. Right. A Soul for a Soul. It's a reprise on the first act where Red Skull was singing. This time, Clint and Nat sing it together. Oh. Basically, before one of them Before one of them dies. Yeah. That's okay. great. Nice. Not even giving away who does. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, when Hulk decides that he's the only one who can wear the gauntlet, best of both worlds, reprise. Uh, I don't know why But yeah, I no, just feel like okay. that <laughs> I suppose it depends On what the words are But I yeah, feel yeah. like You need one like Little part Where he's not Like where he's A little more in doubt Yeah And that's the part That comes back In the reprise I got it uh, I, we'll, we'll work on this one yeah, This yeah. one is rushed Because I was in an auto <laughs> I come here Then this is one Of my favourite ones Has, This is no reprise This is an original song Just like boom In the middle Thanos uh, Sings this I will shred This universe hmm. Boom I love that nice. Title wise that's, that's great yeah. Right then, now this is good. You're going to enjoy this one. It's called Avengers Ensemble. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, I know. Love it. Avengers Ensemble. Avengers Ensemble. ensemble. <laughs> <laughs> this is the this is the final act, yeah. uh, the final fight scene, the mm. battle. And uh, now I have substituted the I am Iron Man thing. Obviously, I wanted it is there in this song, but this is cool because I thought this was more interesting. Where Stark sings. To Thanos, I hope they remember you. <gasps> Boom! And that's a call back to the first act. Yes. Nice. Uh, missed opportunity? I think so. Yeah. That would have been great, but that that's like been... super rude. Yeah. <laughs> but if not in the vein of Tony Stark, then I do not know. Hmm. And final song of the entire show is called Infinity Waltz <laughs> between <laughs> Captain America and Peggy Carter. I love it. I feel like the one thing missing Yeah <laughs> Just that Okay go Just the one thing Like my one note is yeah. I would like a song oh, yeah, uh, like a Set note, during yeah. the fight itself Yeah So I was because thinking Because I feel like there has to be yeah, then so- Something with a little more choreography Maybe something that also uh, Highlights the moment Where Captain Cap picks Mar- up the hammer Oh, oh, oh. I, I thought about Captain Marvel enters And the Captain Marvel entry yeah, Like yeah, yeah, yeah Maybe something Maybe that could be An instrumental theme maybe, I mean well Avengers like Ensemble in, Is supposed to be This big song ooh, I will add Two mini songs, if you like. Two, uh, one song, Hit two me, movements. I'm, I'm adding this. One, yes. I knew it, which I is when it. Cap picks up uh, Thor's hammer, okay. and the other, uh, she's it. not alone. She's not alone. Which I, is the the girl the gang girl, moment? Yeah, I'm into this. Uh, this is great. Both of these go in, oh, and others. Shit. I think you're good. Yeah. yeah, I think this is it. I think we can definitely drop the 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 ancient one track now. That's that's fine. We, we don't have enough room. Yeah, there's no room for explaining that or yeah. e- even. I we can test it out at previews, but uh, yeah. I think we can take the call right now. It, it goes. I think I think Act One is definitely longer than Act Two, but <laughs> I'm okay with this conceptually. Yeah. All right, Infinity Waltz. Mm. I love that. That's great. Great closer. All right. Uh, <laughs> this was a podcast. It was a podcast indeed. Hello, you nerds. This is Shlok Chaturvedi, producer of the Geek Fruit Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, then do check out our other music related episodes. Episode 266, Act Like You Can Sing, where Tejas and Dinkar take a look at actors who moonlight as musicians. Episode 180, Sci Fi Hi Fi Mix Volume 1, where Jishnu and Dinkar delve into the weird and wonderful world of sci fi inspired music. You can also find other episodes listed in the description. Hello everyone, welcome to Tech Careers in the New, the new podcast series presented by Accenture. And I'm your host, Shiladitya Mukhopadhyay. In this podcast series, we'll get you the latest and greatest in the world of technology that's shaping the future of business as we know it. We're talking intelligent platforms, cloud, AI, blockchain, extended reality, and a whole lot more. Every fortnight on Wednesdays, we'll have for you a hot topic with expert speakers from Accenture talking about top trends in the space. How these are changing the world and creating growth across industries. And more importantly, we'll tell you how you can learn more, build your skills and expertise to grow and stay relevant in your career. Episodes out on the IVM Podcast app or wherever you get your podcast from. 
Hi, my name is Anupam Gupta. I'm B50 on Twitter. I am the host of Paisa Paisa, a show that talks money. On my show, I speak to experts from every field of money and finance, from stock markets, equities, debt funds, credit cards, life insurance, every possible area of money and finance that you can think of. We even did an episode on cryptocurrency. I've got fantastic guests from mutual funds to personal finance experts everywhere. Robo advisory, startups, just name it, we've got it. At Pesa Pesa, we help you make smart decisions about money. You work hard for money. Now make your money work hard for you. New episodes out every Monday and you can listen to my show on the IVM podcast app or any other podcasting app that you have.